What's up YouTube, Jason here with Bite My Bits. Today I'm actually doing a few network infrastructure upgrades to my house, but on top of that, I actually got my hands on a server rack, so I can finally get everything that I have set up for my dedicated Plex and my new networking gear off the ground and, well, looking a lot better. Okay, so first things first, the main goal, objective for today is to do, well, it's a few things. For one, I really need to upgrade my home network infrastructure uh, when it comes to utilizing my Plex Media Server. Uh, for two, I desperately needed to get my Plex Media Server off the ground from its current location. As you see, it's kind of pathetic sitting where it is right now, not to mention it looks terribly messy and well, it's just a flat out embarrassment. I did get my hands on this for $50. I got it from Craigslist. It is a used server rack. Of course, it is way too big for my needs because I don't have anything near to actually fill this up, but it's $50 and it also needs a little bit of cleaning too here at the bottom, but I don't really care because I got it for 50 bucks and the guy even delivered it to my house. So total win for me. This is going to serve the purpose of not only housing my Plex Media server and getting that off the ground, but it's also going to be able to house my uh, new networking gear along with my future PFSense router that I plan on building. I don't know exactly when, but I do plan on building that. And very soon I'm going to be getting my hands on some kind of a UPS. I don't know what brand yet, but I definitely, most definitely need a new UPS because since I went with my dedicated server, I've had no power protection. This is my new 24 port gigabit switch that I got off of eBay. It cost me, I think, like $85 or something like that. But it is by HP, it is the Pro Curve, it's the 1810G 24, um, J9450A. Reason why I need this my Plex Media server comes to a grinding halt anytime that I need to do a file dump with any large amount of files. But with this, Hopefully by the time I'm done, I'm going to be able to link aggregate multiple connections to that computer, to that server, and that means that multiple things can be able to access that server without bogging it down. That's the goal. That's what I hope to, to attain today, so I'm really looking forward to that and not having any more issues with my server. Before I do all that, I have to do a little bit of tweaks to the actual server itself. When I put it together, I did not put in my additional SATA. Uh, card that I have in my, main, in my main computer because I was still using it at the time. I'm not using it anymore in my main computer, so I'm going to take that out of there. I'm going to put it into the dedicated media server, and I'm going to expand the, the ports that it has. That way I can put more hard drives in it. These are the brand new NICs that I bought. They're actually server grade. They are used. Got them off of eBay. Cost me about, I think, $45 a piece, but these are going to be going into my server. Well, at least one of them will be going to my server. And this is a server grade with link, a link aggregation available to it. So hopefully I'll be able to uh, link at least two, if not four of these connections to give me up to four gigabits per second connection with my server. Keep in mind that when you link aggregate, as far as I know, even though you have four gigabit ports working together, all they really are doing just load balancing. So you're not gonna get four gigabits per second transfer speed. Uh, all from one, you know, let's say one data dump, as far as I know. All this is going to be able to do is allow you to handle multiple connections, saturating multiple gigabit uh, ports without bogging down the rest of the uh, connections coming into that server. So hopefully Plex won't be stuttering or buffering anytime I'm doing a data dump. So, doing a little bit of upgrade to my media server, changing a few things from my main PC, and getting everything into an actual rack server. But, the second goal today is to, to clean up my computer room. Let me give you an idea. Currently, this is what it kind of looks like in my computer room. I've got a little bit of a mess. It's not necessarily terrible, but the biggest thing is, is that I have a lot of stuff that I don't use anymore, like that network switch. I got some extra spare parts from an old laptop that I haven't removed. Um, you know, just I just kind of got to get things cleared up and on top of all that I really need to get this mess cleaned up down here because it's embarrassing. So that's going to be my second objective to get everything cleaned up looking a hell of a lot better than what it is right now. So let's go ahead and start by upgrading my Plex media server.
right, these are the little ghetto mounts that I have. I just went to Lowe's, got the screws that I need to go into this case, and then this little L mount. It is not a perfect solution, but it is enough to support the back. I'm actually going to lower this down a couple notches, probably put it right about here. Um, and then I'll be able to mount the front here just by the ears only with one screw probably so it will lay on this uh, again it's not the optimal solution I would rather have a set of rails that way I can move it in and not have it mounted properly but until I want to put up the 40 bucks or whatever it is to buy it and actually deal with it this will have to do also if you have any experience in this mounting with just the ears on a large case like that let me know in the comments I was told you're not supposed to do that because if this gives out right here, I mean, if these twist out or, or twist off or break or whatever, then it just screws up the entire case. So I was told not to mount just by the ears. These are more just to secure it and the, the rails are actually to mount it into the rack case. But um, that's what I was told. I don't have a bunch of experience with it. So I'm just going with what I think I know. And I'm sure somebody in the comments will tell me how stupid I am. But until then, this is what's gonna happen. it helps to put it in the right way up. That's what happens when you don't pay attention. I bought four three feet, uh, I think Cat 6A or Cat 6, it's either 6 or 6A, but I got four of these that hopefully should be the perfect length. Let's see. By the way, I've never done link aggregation, so am I plugging into the right port? I don't know. Does it matter? I don't know, but we'll find out. These are going to go around here. See if I can even get the camera in here. Uh, I don't know if it matters what gets plugged where. Uh, this is kind of stupid. I need to hold this camera when I'm trying to do this, but that's YouTube. Probably do this a better way, huh? No. Perfect. As long as this one fit. Boom. There we go. Four connections. I don't even know if you can see it, but there you go. So much crap. Right now I'm in, the, I'm in the zone of getting the thing working, get everything up and running, get the network going, and then pretty it up once I know that I have it working. And 
kind of want to get the main server at least connected, get my main computer at least connected, get everything booted up, make sure that it at least works, maybe not link aggregated right now, but make sure that everything at least works and is up and running and that we're connected. And then I'm gonna go through and make it look better. So this is gonna be the first boot after getting everything plugged in. This is just the internet cable. To be honest, I think with most switches you can plug them in anywhere, so I don't know if that's true. It's not true, I think so. I'm pretty sure you can plug it in anywhere. I don't know, never actually owned a managed switch, but I'm pretty sure you can plug it in anywhere. And yes, this is this is kind of ghetto, but again, I'm gonna pretty it up later. Right now, it's just wanted to work. I'm starting to get some network lights. That's a good thing. Let's see. It says on. A gigabit, that's good. On is a gigabit, it's good. All right. Now let's plug in my computer with a short patch cable and just to make sure that's up and running. Obviously I'm gonna change this once I know that everything is running, but for right now, this will have to do. Okay, so I learned something today, and that is network teaming is kind of a complicated thing. Um, if you know how to do it, I'm sure it's super simple, and if you've done it before, you've actually, you actually know what you're doing, it's probably really easy, but if you don't know what you're doing, it's somewhat difficult. And yes, I changed my shirt because I spilled something on my Plex shirt. Anyways, if you don't know what you're doing, it takes a little bit to get everything figured out. And that is basically what I've spent most of this evening doing, is trying to figure out this whole network teaming thing. So what I did is I went into my server and I set up the network teaming with the four connected ports. Uh, then I logged into my HP switch and that's my computer because it's crazy loud. I logged into the HP switch and I set up trunking for those four ports and then I got it to connect and everything was good. And then it registers as a four gigabit connection in Windows. So then I went through and I set up and connected these two cables, right? These are just temporary. These are not gonna look like this when I'm done, but these are just temporary. I set up these two cables to go to my main PC just to try to test this out. Basically what I have here is a rat's nest that um, it's actually because I was routing some things through this switch, uh, but this switch kind of sucks. It kind of kept crashing on me, so I didn't use it for very long. But anyways, I was using this as a hub to hook up additional computers that I worked on over there for various reasons. And I don't really use that anymore. I haven't used that switch in a long time, but I still kept it plugged in. Still kept all those cables plugged in, but now I actually need some of those cables because I have to basically route from this somewhere down the back, which I'll show all this later, but somewhere down the back up to the wall, around this all the way over here, probably up to the wall, and then I don't know if I'm gonna go uh, underneath the desk and then back up through here, but then up to the computer. So I don't know the route I'm gonna take, but that's the distance I need and I don't, actually have the cables extra in a box right now, but I have a crap load of cables over here. So I'm pretty sure I can find them somewhere in here uh, that I need. So yeah, that's what I'm working with. And yes, my computer is loud as shit. It just sits there, just, just being loud. I really need new fans, it sucks. This video has been dragged out just a little bit because I felt like I really needed to add something to the overall upgrade, and that something is a UPS. Now, I really thought, hey, I need a UPS on this because ever since I upgraded my main computer, moved and shuffled everything around, I didn't have a UPS to back up my server, and now that it's a dedicated server, I really wanted to get that done. Here's the thing with my server. Right now, it's running on a Windows 10 operating system because I had a Windows 7 key. It was free to upgrade to Windows 7. There's actually a big, long story behind that. It was a very aggravating experience for me. But the point is, right now, it's temporarily running on Windows 10. And what's worse is I have absolutely no redundancy whatsoever, at least for any of you know, my basic media. I do use this as a file server, and a lot of important files are backed up in a mirror, or not backed up, but they are redundant in a mirror raid, so I won't lose any kind of vital information, but everything else is just kind of risky. I say temporarily on Windows 10 because, well basically, the 
I want to get back to FreeNAS, and that's my ultimate goal. I want to be on FreeNAS, I want to run the ZFS file system. However, the hardware that I have is an i7-3770 processor, and it does not support ECC memory. On top of that, I only have 16 gigabytes of RAM. And right now I'm sitting at 32 terabytes of storage. That's raw storage, of course, but still the point is 32 terabytes of storage. 16 gigabytes of RAM will not work with 32 terabytes of storage in the ZFS file system. That was only the second problem though. The first problem that I had is that since I made a dedicated Plex Media server and I had all my hardware pushed over to always be running, in this case, completely just to be a file server and to serve media files with Plex, I had no battery backup. That means my lights flicker probably two or three times a month and they go off from anywhere between you know five seconds to three minutes. It's just, I don't know why, it just does it. It's annoying as shit, but hey, that's what it does. So. I can't trust the ZFS file system without a backup power supply. I just can't do it, especially how much stuff I'm moving back and forth. So cannot do that. And I don't want to trust the ZFS file system without ECC memory. So there's two main obstacles that I have to do before I can actually run a reliable and stable free NAS system on my computer. So the first problem is taken care of with the UPS. And I will show this to you here. That first problem with not having a UPS is finally taken care of. And that's actually the reason why this video has been basically dragged out for almost two weeks now, because I was kind of getting everything set up and put together and kind of tossing around the idea of getting a UPS. The UPS that I am going to be putting in this today is a cyber power, I think it's a 1650 watt cyber power unit. And I think if I remember right, it's 2100 VA. I could be wrong. I'll look it up. And if not, I'll put that in the video. What this is going to do for me, this is going to do two things. Well, multiple things, but the first thing it's going to do is obviously it's going to back up everything that I see here. Sooner or later, it's going to, it's going to also back up my PS Sense router that I plan on building. That's not until down the line, so, but I do want to build a, a PFSense router. I've been itching to build one, looking for the right hardware, right, the, the right reliability uh, in the hardware that I need. I've been toying around with it, I just, I just haven't jumped off that cliff, yet, the cliff yet and actually did it. But sooner or later, I will definitely be building a PFSense. I just, I just really want to build one. Do I need one? Do not need one. Do I want one? Yes. The second thing it's going to do for me is it's actually going to provide power to my main PC as well. With my main PC, or even with my main PC, the two monitors, or at least one of my monitors running off of it, the Plex Media Server, the network switch, and possibly maybe the PFSense uh, router in the future, if I can get a low enough power, I could probably run all of those for a solid, I'm going to say 10 to 15 minutes off of this one backup power supply unit. That's why I went with such a big one. I wanted something that can handle everything. That means that I can also take the basic unit that I'm using right now that technically cannot even handle the full load of my main PC when it's rendering or playing games or anything like that. I can take that UPS unit and I can throw it over in the entertainment system and I can back up my cable modem and my wireless router. So it can handle both of those and power them for probably hours without any kind of issues. So Basically, when the power goes out, my network will never go down, my server will never go down, assuming it only goes down for a few minutes, and I'll be good to go. So that's the end game, that's the goal. For now, I'm going to go ahead and unbox, or finish unboxing this power supply unit, uh, and then move forward with this video. Yeah. 
This thing takes so much power that they put a 20 amp plug-in on it. Now, here's the thing. The circuit that I'm plugging it into is not 20 amps. It's on 15 amps, I checked. Uh, to get around that, and I don't know if this is a good idea, I did buy an adapter, which basically takes this weird ass plug-in, plugs it into that, and then lets me plug it into the wall. Is that a smart idea? I don't think so. I'm not entirely sure, but here's what I figure. If it doesn't work, the worst it could probably do is pop a circuit. And I could probably swap that pretty easily. In fact, I know I can swap that pretty easily. I mean, the breaker box is right over there, so I can swap that pretty easily. But for now, I'm just gonna use an adapter. All right, here's a better look at the front here. Uh, it's pretty basic. I just like this because it will go into my rack mount. Uh, it does have an LCD screen for display. Uh, I think it always stays on, which doesn't really bother me. I think some people complain about that. And I actually think I'm going to go ahead and instead of putting it right here, like right underneath it, I'm gonna put it probably down right here because I plan on putting another, possibly a 4U server right there. I don't know, I'm not sure yet. I have to figure that out, but I'm probably just gonna put it down there. Plus it's heavy as shit, and the less I have to lift it up, the better. Now I have to install these into the rack. Should be pretty simple. was kind of a pain in the ass but either way I got the front uh, screwed in but I'm gonna show you what I was working with before what I used to set my server and get everything up and running temporarily uh, I know it's a little ghetto but I'll show you anyways okay so what I did is I just basically zip tied this uh, power adapter or this power uh, surge protector to the frame and I just kind of ran cables down and zip tied them all the way down so kind of a kind of a ghetto setup I know but it did work, kind of did get everything out of the way. Got everything plugged in back here. I, I Now that I'm going to redo it, obviously I'm gonna have to probably rerun uh, some of these cables. So, um, yeah. Sometimes I forget that I have a drill. Oh. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> Perfect. Okay, so totally not as bad as I thought it would be. It did go in pretty easily and looks like got everything lined up here. So this just slides in and out here. I'll put in a couple, probably just one screw on each side uh, to hold it in. Don't really have to, but I definitely will. I think I made this gap just a little bit too big. I was planning on possibly another for you, so maybe I didn't, I don't know. Either way, it is what it is, it's gonna stay like that. I'll probably get another, and the reason why I keep saying a for you because I really like this Rosewill case, you know? And I know, I know they sent that to me and I got it for free, but I have really fallen in love with this case. This is a very versatile, very usable case, very sturdy. It's been a really nice uh, server, ch server chassis for me. So um, they discontinued this one, unfortunately, because this is a badass case. This is only $200 and it comes with all of this. Now they sell one that doesn't have this uh, these these uh, hot swap bays, but instead it has like a five and a half, um, some other shit, you know, maybe some space for fans, but it doesn't have any of this. It just has all internal mounts, which is okay if you have a static server, but if you want the hot swap like I really desperately wanted, this is definitely the better case. I'm a little let down that they don't have that, and that, that other case is $89, and then these little packets, or these, these come in a pack of four, and it's all one cage, so all of these cost like, I think 50 bucks? just for one cage or 40 bucks, it's something like that. So if you get three of them, I mean, obviously your your price is gonna get up there pretty quick. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and get this 
uh, screwed in real quick, probably won't film it, but I'm gonna get this put in real quick and then I'm going to shut this down and kind of start getting everything plugged in, maybe. I, I might have to let this charge for a little bit, I don't know, but either way, I'm moving forward. Be honest, all right here is the best feeling in the world. Holy shit. Oh, that sucks. I really hope it's not that loud all the time. Wow, that is loud. I really should have saw that coming. Oh, thank the noodle lord. Holy shit. I am so happy that that... Seriously, I am so happy that that thing turned off. I was just sitting there panicking like, oh my God, that shit is so loud. My computer is already loud enough. That's already a problem I'm working on. That thing was crazy loud. I am so happy that it's not like that all the time. So happy. I got everything, well, I don't have everything plugged in. I have the server plugged in. Um, I did plug in the monitor, which, oh, by the way, I plugged in this monitor temporarily because when I was getting everything set up, I was setting up network teaming. I've never done that before, have no experience with network teaming, and I kept losing connection because I only was working with one. And eventually, I hooked up another uh, cable to it and then was using that as a backbone to configure it. it. Took me a little bit to figure that out. But for the most part, I do have the teaming set up on this server. Um, teaming's kind of a weird beast and I'm not sure if it's set up 100%, but I do know it's working. It's really hard for me to do a thorough test just because the nature of teaming. Uh, I do know, however, that now I can do a file dump to this, writing a bunch of video files to it for like, you know, shooting a wedding or whatever else I'm doing. I can write a bunch of video files to it um, and the rest of my uh, stuff inside my house will not lag anymore. So that was the biggest issue. I'd be watching a, a, a HD movie on my Xbox One and I would go ahead and do a file dump for whatever reason and it would it, everything would start buffering. So I've done tests now with the teaming set up, with having the four connections going to it, to technically four gigabits a second, however, you cannot get that with Windows, but still, at least I don't know, I don't think I can. I only have two going to my back of my PC. Um, so I can't really test four gigabits a second. I don't even get more than one gigabit a second when I'm doing a file transfer test. But again, teaming is kind of a weird beast and I don't fully understand it. So that could just be my own issue. Either way, the test I ran worked. I don't have buffering issues. So yay. Back to this. So I got my computer or my server plugged into it. I plugged in the monitor, but I have it turned off right now as it sits it's sitting at 132 watts. So, uh, doo -doo 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 -doo. as it sits, I can run for 78 minutes, 81 minutes. If the power went out right now, I could run for 81 minutes. It's showing that it, the battery is full. So, 81 minutes just with the server. So what I'm gonna do now is run this ghetto cord, which I bought a long time ago. Um, I'm going to run this ghetto cord over here and I'm going to plug in my main PC and I'm going to get rid of this. Obviously this is temporary. I have to get a new cable, run it through the back, go along behind that, take it behind here, you know, and do it right. But for right now, I just want to kind of get it set up. I want to plug it in. I want to see what my runtime will be with not only my server and my network switch running. Oh yeah. That was with the network switch, oops. So anyways, with my server, the network switch, and my main PC, and maybe even my two monitors. I wanna see what that runtime would be with everything. With the monitors and everything plugged in, it is going to be putting out still 132. Right now the monitors are in standby, really nothing else is drawing power. I'm gonna go ahead and turn this on, and we're gonna see
Here we go. Three hundred and thirty watts max. That ain't bad. On three hundred and forty-six, let's see. That would get me forty-two minutes right now at runtime. Still sitting at three hundred and forty-six. Not bad. Three sixty-three. I'm running the graphics test right here. Running a CPU. Um, the heavy load software here. For some reason, I couldn't get it to do, to, to do the video, so I just went ahead and ran the benchmark there for the uh, graphics. And I'm drawing 841 watts. 800, nope, 676. Okay, now that is 20 minutes of runtime. So if I had the server going, um, which it has one stream going right now, but if I had the server going and it was usually one stream is about average. So if the server's going and my computer is full flex, looks like I'm gonna be getting 15 to 20 minutes, 13 minutes um, of runtime, which is plenty of time, really, as long as I'm here. And my computer's not gonna be going that crazy if I'm not here. So I haven't really seen it go over, uh, I think 860-ish. It kind of bounces, but yeah, it gets close to 860, but hasn't really gone above that. Unplug it and see what happens. But where would I be if I didn't unplug it and test it? Uh, let's see, 53, 13 minutes. Alrighty, I'm just gonna unplug this. Uh, boom. Okay, so you unplug it. It starts going bananas. Eight minutes, nine minutes. Look at that. I know that's what a UPS is supposed to do, but it's still amazing to me. Better get a plug back in before it freaks out. There we go. Kind of dropped down there a little bit. Four minutes later, that was close. All right, I am finally, for the most part, finished with this little upgrade that I was going to do. Let's recap. So the primary focus here was to get the network switch and get the network, the new four port network card into the server, set up some teaming and allow some load balancing over the network. This basically stemmed from anytime I did a file dump, Plex would start buffering. Now with the tests that I'm running, I can do all the file dumps I want to and the Xbox never skips a beat. So I'm thinking I got it set up right just from that test. I will try to do more tests down the line once I figure out and learn a little bit more with teaming. If you know more about teaming or whatever, you have any input, please let me know in the comments. Uh, I can tell you right now it's just a, it's a whole new world for me, but I got everything set up and it seems to be working just fine. I got the managed network switch all hooked up, got the teaming set up through the switch along with inside of Windows 10, which you can do through the PowerShell. Um, I was able to finally get my, my Plex media server up off of the floor and into its own case or mount it up properly. Well, kind of properly. As you can see, I had to kind of ghetto -fy the mounting because I didn't have any rails for it. So I just went to Lowe's, I got a couple L brackets, got it uh, attached to the bottom. So it kind of sits there. In the front, I only put one screw in because technically if I were to put both screws in, the entire server would be suspended by the ears. And that's probably okay, maybe. I don't know. I read a few things online. It's not a good idea to do that. So all I did was put one screw in the bottom and let it rest at the back. So not a perfect world or not a perfect installation by any means at all. However, it works for what I need. It looks pretty good. The network switch is right underneath it. So that's great. And I was able to mount the power supply exactly how it was supposed to be because of course it came with all of the hardware. So. I got everything off the ground. I got the UPS by CyberPower. Now, keep in mind the CyberPower UPS that I got, again, 
is not the professional series, which I think is the PR series. What I got was the was the ON or OS series. I forgot what it was, but it's the Smart App LCD. And basically the difference again is the, the pure wave versus the simulated wave. Now I've been kind of messing around with my computers. Uh, I've done some tests. Everything seems to be running just fine. I don't see any issues. Maybe I'll have some issues in the future. I don't know. Again, not, a, not an expert on the whole sine wave thing. All I know is that it's good to have the sine wave. Past that, not really sure. From my understanding though, newer power supplies can handle it with or without. So that's what I'm kind of going on and that's why I cut the, the ticket just a little bit. The UPS unit that I got, which I will put in the description and probably put it on the video somewhere, uh, the UPS that I got did cost a little over $500. Uh, I bought an adapter off of Amazon to plug it into the regular port, and that was another $15.99. So all in all, you know, you definitely spend a little bit, of, a little bit of money to get a, a good UPS. But it was a name that I trusted, so that's what I went with. Now that I have a UPS, I have the network switch and everything put in there. I got plenty of hard drives. I got my server mounted and everything. Now the next step, which is way down the line, is I plan on upgrading my server to some kind of a motherboard or CPU combo that will handle ECC memory. Obviously, that's probably gonna be a Xeon processor or two. <laughs> Won't get stingy, but in the end, I do, I do need to get something that handles an ECC memory uh, setup. That way I can set up the ZFS, the ZFS file system, make sure that there's no errors, make sure I don't lose my entire uh, storage just from one error in the memory, and also, of course, have to get more memory because I got more storage than what I can even handle with memory at the moment. Now I just have to clean up the mess that I made uh, in my nice cleaned <laughs> computer room. I gotta re-clean everything up, uh, get everything situated, possibly hook up the extra UPS, and I'm pretty much set up, ready to go. Let me know what you guys think in the comments about my upgrades. I know it was kind of, uh, you know, pieced together from some weird parts. A lot of it's old used parts off of it, you know, eBay and Craigslist, I understand that, but you know, when you're trying to do upgrades on a budget, you want semi-server quality stuff for basically a consumer price, this is what you have to do. So that's the route that I took. Doing a complete server setup like this with a rack, the network switch, the you know, the rack mounted power supply, this is all new to me. It's been exciting to experience this. I've actually never technically set up one of these before. I've reinserted things into racks. Uh, but I've never actually set it up from the start. So this is definitely a big thing for me. I'm definitely enjoying this. This is the whole nerdy thing. This is why I love doing this because it's all a learning experience. Just like the network teaming, all a learning experience. I got it working, I got it set up, and I've done my tests and everything looks like it's working pretty well. I just don't really have the hardware to do a thorough test from multiple computers to see if I'm getting more bandwidth or more throughput than I originally got with just with one gigabit switch. But based off of my test, everything seems to be working as intended. So that's great. If you have any information on how exactly a teaming is gonna benefit me aside from load balancing multiple connections to a server. Like maybe if there's something I'm missing that would allow me to you know, set up teaming on my main computer, have the teaming on the, uh, on the server, and be able to get two gigabits per second file transfer speeds. If you know how to do that, please let me know in the comments. Because I have it set up, I have teaming set up on my main computer with two, with a board capable of teaming those, I've checked the specs, it is capable. I have teaming set up on the on the Plex server, but I can't really get more than that. From what I'm reading online, that's normal. Maybe I'm wrong. Again, total noob when it comes to teaming. So if you have any more information, feel free to let me know in the comments. Guys, if you like this video, please share a like and subscribe below. I would definitely appreciate it. I've put a lot of work into this video, so likes are awesome. Also, if you want to follow me on Twitter at underscore bite my bits, I would much appreciate, much appreciate that as well. Thank you for watching and have a good day.